Okay, so in this video, we're going to start chapter three. Chapter three is uh, functions and their graphs. Okay, functions and their graphs. The first uh, section, 3.1. We discuss functions. Okay. So, first, before we discuss functions, let's talk about, talk about another concept. We call it a relation. A relation is a correspondence. between two sets. Okay, so if X and the Y are two elements in these sets, And if a relation exists between x and y, we say that x corresponds to y. or that y depends on x. Okay, and then we write an arrow from x to y. Okay, so x corresponds to y, y depends on x, and you have this arrow. And this x, we call it input. And the Y is called the output. And sometimes you can use, you can say, uh, a mapping. Okay. Uh, so that's uh, the following thing. So let's say. Uh, Example. Uh, this example is more complex. Let's try to make it clear. So there's the a state a, a list of the states. So Alaska, Alaska, Arizona, and uh, California, Colorado. Florida and North Dakota okay so there's a list of the states some states and uh, there is a number of, of representative in the house of the representative so the number of representative The number of representatives it depends on the uh, the population of the state. So you have one, seven, eight, twenty-five, and fifty-three. Some numbers, and uh, based on the uh, the facts, I mean, uh, you can check it on the internet. The number of representative will be Alaska and uh, North Dakota. Uh, they have only one representative, then the Arizona, you have eight representative, and uh, California, and 53 representative, and uh, Colorado, seven representative, whatever, uh, Florida, 25 representative. So this is a, a mapping. 
it gives you the relation between the states and uh, the number of the rep representative. Okay? So a map illustrate a relation by using a set of input and uh, and drawing arrows to the corresponding elements in the set of output. So this is a, a, a map. This is a map. Okay, in the map part, uh, out ordered pair can be used to represent okay you see here the relation we write this way from x to y x corresponds to y y depends on x and all the pair we can use this x comma y with a parenthesis it means x corresponds to y y depends on x okay that's all just the concepts just the concepts we still don't have function yet. So we have relation. So you have one point, you get another point. Okay, so let's draw another map. Let's draw another map. Uh, for example, there are certain persons. Uh, for example, person. There's Dan. Uh, G small and uh, Colin and Phoebe, 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 and the phone number. So we have five, 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 whatever number, uh, two, three, four, five, and uh, Five nine four, uh, nine four zero two, and nine three zero, uh, three nine five six, um, five five five, eight two nine four, and eight three nine, nine zero one three, and the Dan has a phone number. This one, uh, G Small has a phone number. This one. And the calling for certain reason, possibly uh, calling is he or she. Uh, calling has uh, a business phone and the private phone, so calling has two phone numbers. And the phobe has one number, one phone number. Okay, so this is also a map. It also represents a relation. But due to the, uh, the true fact, some person can have more than one phone, so it can have more than one phone number, right? So this is uh, uh, the possibility. This is a relation. This is a relation. Calling corresponds to the phone number. The phone number depends on calling. When you get a calling, you may, I mean, just say corresponds. That's my cell phone. I don't say uh, anything else. Just say calling has this one. It corresponds to that's a, 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 the, the owner, and this phone depend on this uh, uh, the, 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 the depend on this uh, person. But this is not the um, a nice map because from calling, you have two arrows out. You have two arrows out. So we want 
a special type of a relation or we want a special type of map so that from one input there's only one output we do not allow multiple cell phones so that's the definition let x and y be two sets oh now I'm we do not do not empty sets my bad we do not allow empty sets a function from x to y or into y is a relation that associates with each element each element of x exactly one element in y so there's only one arrow from one element so that is a, a function so basically function just means we don't like this type of a relation one person can have only one uh, cell phone number we don't allow a uh, multiple cell phone number okay so from one I input you cannot have multiple output and x is called the domain of the function x is called the domain of function and for each x in capital X each element x in capital X the corresponding element in y the corresponding element y in y is called the image or the value the value of the function x or the image of x So the corresponding element, you can call it the value of the function at x, or you can call it the image of x. And the set of all images of the elements in x is called the range of the function the range of the function so the range of function is a set of all the images if that point is not the image for any input then it's not in the range okay okay so for example, when we have certain relation, if we have a, a map, it's very clear uh, if, if it is a, a, a function or not. For example, if we have a gas station, you put the mobile uh, share uh, so no and 7-eleven whatever it's just from other other states I guess other city and uh, there's a price of the uh, gas thing the price of regular per gallon whatever price we have a uh, um, 2.71 is per gallon uh, 2.72 
and 2.69. If you map is like this, this is a, a function because from one input, there's only one output arrow. There's on, only one arrow. This is a function. But if we have uh, let's talk about the diamonds, carrots, uh, 0 0 0.70, 0 0.71, 0 0.75, 0 0.78, and you have a price. Uh, it could be 1,575, 1,767, 5, 1,798, and 1,952, whatever number. Uh, so you, you, you may have this arrow. Uh, the carrots is 0.71. It could be this price. It could also be a different price uh, because of other reasons. So this one is not a function because from this input you have multiple output, multiple. Output, so it's not a function. Okay. So if you have a map, it's obvious to it's very obvious to determine if the map gave you uh, a function or not just check if you, if you have multiple output from a single element or not okay uh, sometimes we don't uh, have the map directly for example we have some relation so determine Whether whether each relation represents a function. And if it is, find the domain the range. Let's see. First one, the relation. Remember, we use that ordered pair, ordered pair. One, four, two, five, three, six, four, seven. Order the pair. They start from the first, uh, first number is the input, the second number is output. We don't want this situation happen. It means from one input you have two output. From one, from the same number in the first position, you have two different second number. That is not allowed. But here, the first number is one. This is two. This is three. This is four. So it is a function. There's no multiple output. It is a function. The domain. Domain is a collection of all input. One, two, three, four. The range, the range is set of output four, five, six, seven. So this is a domain range and it is a function. And let's see the C, B is the same. C, we have a negative three, nine, negative two, four, square, for example, zero, zero, one, one negative three eight so now this is not a square okay now let's check from negative three you get nine from negative three you can get eight so this is not a function from one input you have multiple output it's not a function if it's not a and if it's not a function there's no uh domain range okay there's no domain range 
Okay, so we can determine the uh, whether a relation is a function or not based on the either map or this kind of ordered pair, ordered pair. And the next example, we want to determine if the equation y equal to 2x minus 5 defines y as a function of x. So we want to see if this equation really gave us a, uh, a function or not. Uh, well, the explanation will be the following. Given x, we multiply it We multiply x by 2 and, and then subtract 5. This gives a unique element. So there's no second possible uh, value. So it is an equation, a uh, function, this equation. defines a function. This equation really defines a function, okay? Okay, so that's, a, that's not a problem. That's not a problem. So whenever you have x, you will clearly see what is a uh, y. Sometimes it's not. For example, we have x squared plus y squared equal to 1. Uh, we want to see if y is a function of x. We start from x squared plus y squared equal to 1. So y squared is x minus, uh, is 1 minus x squared. Well, take square root, you will have plus or minus square root of 1 minus x squared. So given an x, there are output two outputs so this is not a function this is not a function okay so just be careful this is not a function because uh, given one x you have multiple y Okay, let's continue to find the values of a function. So here we get uh, an equation which defines a, a function, and this is the equation which does not define a function. Okay. Second, find the value of function. Of a function. Uh, normally we will use f because the, the word a function f so we will use f g h or maybe capital f capital g capital h to to denote the uh, the functions and uh, we will say that if f is a function then for each x in its domain the corresponding image the corresponding image in the range is designated by the symbol fx. Okay, so we just use fx, uh, f of x, uh, to represent the, the, re the, the image of x. Okay, and we call 
fx, the value of f at x, the value of f at x, that is fx, the corresponding image. Okay. Uh, be careful, f x does not mean f times x. It just means the image of x under the function f. So when we have y equal to fx equal to uh, 2x minus 5, when we try to evaluate f of uh, 2 thirds, you have to really figure out the formula. This is 2 times x minus 5, so it's 2 times, this is input, 2 times uh, 3 halves and minus 5. 2 times 3 halves is a 3. 3 minus 5 is negative 2. So f of uh, 3 halves is equal to negative 2. Okay, so that's uh, mm, the meaning. And be careful, there are some remarks. The remark 1, fx can only accept numbers from its domain. Once you determine, uh, you fix the domain, you cannot, uh, uh, you, you, you cannot choose the point outside domain to evaluate. If you put, if you do that way, you all, uh, you actually change the, uh, you actually change the function. And second, for each input, there is exactly one output. Okay, so that's actually the definition, the, the importance of a function. For one input, there's only one output. And for the function y equal to fx, x is called the independent variable. Independent variable. And the y is called dependent variable. Okay. Y depend on x. So x is an independent variable and the y is a dependent variable. And uh, this independent variable sometimes is also called argument. You may see this word uh, in some places. Okay. Okay. Now let's see the example. So we always have uh, some e concepts and theorems, and then we get examples. So for the function f x equal to two x squared minus three x, then we are looking for f of three f of 3, you just let x be 3, so it's a 2 times 3 squared minus 3 times 3. 3 squared is 9, times 2 is 18. 3 times 3 is 9, 18 minus 9 is 18. Okay, that's all. That's it. And second, fx plus f of 3. Well, fx, this is fx. 2x squared minus 3x f of 3, uh, based on our computation, we know f of 3 is 9. If, you, if we didn't do this computation, you're going to do it here. So this is uh, the sum. You just add them. So you, you replace it fx by this uh, formula. Okay, and c, 3 times fx. Well, this is multiplication. So it's a 3 times 2x squared minus 3x. So it's a 3 times 2x squared, 6x squared. 3 times 3x minus 9x. Okay, and d, f of negative x. 
Well, here, this is input. Whatever you have, you always put it in the corresponding position for x. So x is here, you are going to square it. So it, no matter what you get, it's, you have negative x. This is input, you're going to square it. Minus 3, here is x, you're going to put negative x here. This moment, negative x is the input. So negative x squared is still x squared. But negative 3x times negative x is, is, a, is a positive, it's a plus 3x. Okay? When you have a negative sign, don't uh, forget the parentheses, otherwise you may have a problem. Okay? That's all the evaluation. Let's say the more evaluations, E. If we have a negative fx, well, negative fx, it, it, it looks like negative 1 times fx. So you just put a negative sign. fx is a 2x squared minus 3x. Don't forget the parentheses because uh, fx is this difference. It's a one quantity. So it's negative 2x squared and plus 3x. And f, f of 3x. f of 3x, here, check here. You have x squared, you have input squared. So whenever you have input squared, minus 3 times the input, 3x squared is 9x squared, times 2 is 18x squared. 3 times 3 is 9, minus 9x. Okay. G. f of x plus 3. Well, it's, it, it will be very long. Because here you have 2 times input squared, 2 times whatever inside square minus three times whatever inside okay so this is one quantity it's an input you just put the in the position of input so if we simplify it it's x squared plus six x plus nine it's a minus three x and minus nine three times x negative uh, three x so three times nine is nine it's a minus minus and two times x squared plus twelve x and plus eighteen minus 3x and minus 9 so it's 2x squared 12x minus 3x plus 9x 18 minus 9 plus 9 okay the final thing more complex fx plus h minus f of h over h assume h is not zero it's just a long computation but it's not that bad so you have x plus h as input. So you get 2x plus h squared minus 3x plus h, right? Input is x, so three times. Minus, because you have minus sign, don't forget the uh, parentheses. fh, you just get 2h squared minus 3h. Input is h, so you put h there. Okay, and then let's try to simplify it x plus h squared it's 2x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus 3x minus 3h minus 3x minus 3h minus 2h squared and plus 3h over h see very uh, just long but not difficult minus 3h pl uh, plus 3h they cancelled it's continuous simplification. So 2 times x squared, 2 times 2xh, 2 times h squared, minus 3x. Minus 2h squared. Miss something or not? Ah, yeah, I think I <laughs> I copied something wrong. I, anyway, anyway, so far it's good, but it's not what I'm trying to compute. Okay. 
in the exam in 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 a x in a uh, textbook it's supposed to be x not h so that's why i feel like i couldn't finish it so anyway 2h squared minus 2h squared you cancel them so you have 2x squared plus 4x h minus 3x over h well that's it that's 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 the best way we can do uh, because i i copy something wrong so uh, that's the best way if i get this x correct oh, we can continue the simplification it doesn't matter we try to evaluate function okay and this expression not not this one this expression f x plus h minus f x over h this expression if we go through this again let me do it quickly Basically, it's the same steps. Just change this x to be uh, change this h to be x. This place you cancel three h here. You cancel three x. Then you cancel 2x squared with 2x squared. So you have a 4xh plus 2h squared minus 3h over h. This numerator, h, 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 they all contain h, so we can factor out h. And then we cancel h from top and bottom, so we get 4x plus 2h minus 3. And this kind of expression, fx plus h minus fx over h, is called the difference quotient of f. Difference quotient of f. Okay? So if I do it correctly, the, the formula is simpler. If I do it in this way, it's more complex. Okay, good. And next, there are many uh, different functions. For example, if we have fx equal to x squared, then for whatever uh, numbers we can take square, not of whatever, uh, some good numbers, so f of 1.234, just take square. Uh, 1.234 squared by hand you can compute it's 1.522756 I'm not going to compute it but you can try it and uh, if gx another function is 1 of x then g of 1.234 is 1 over 1.234 well this number is bad you cannot write it as a, as a finite decimal number. So it's actually just a Russian number with a repeated uh, decimal positions. h of x, square root of x. We have, if we have a square root of function, h of 1.234, um, possibly we can only write this way. Without a calculator, you cannot simplify it. And during the exam, we cannot use calculator. So leave this as leave this as your answer don't simplify it okay you cannot simplify it uh, that's a, the evaluation sometimes the evaluation highly depends on the calculator which you can never use another way so for example this function this equation, this equation, 3x plus y equal to 5. We write it, we move the 3x to the right side, we get 5 minus 3x. Then this, you see how, how do you get the uh, y value in terms of x. Very straightforward. This is called explicit form. 
and the original equation is not the uh, a straightforward ex explanation about a function. So this is implicit, but it's equivalent to it. So these two things are equivalent. We simply just move three x to the right side. You uh, you can actually move it back. So this also represents a function, but it's an implicit. Implicit of a form. Okay, so you you may have, for example, x y is equal to four. Then the explicit form is y equal to 4 over x. For Whenever you have x, you use 4 uh, over x, then you, you get a y. But here, it's implicit. Or you get x squared minus y is equal to 6. Its corresponding explicit form is x squared minus y equal to x squared minus 6. Okay? The explicit form and the implicit form. Uh, next, how do we find the domain of function defined by certain equation? So sometimes this function does not uh, come from some explanation. It comes from some equation. So we don't have a straightforward domain. We have to study it and figure out the domain. And in this case, the domain of f is a, the largest set. Is the largest set of real numbers. For which fx is a real number. So it just makes sense. You can find the, the value. Then that input will be inside the domain. So for example, if we have fx equal to x squared plus 5x, then the domain or the natural domain, the domain is from negative infinity to positive infinity, all real numbers, the set of all real numbers. Because for whatever real number you can take square, you can multiply by five, you do addition. Okay. So the domain is uh, from negative infinity to positive infinity. And second, if your function g of x is a three x over x squared minus four. You have a rational expression. Make sure that your denominator is not equal to zero because we cannot divide whatever number by zero. So x minus two cannot be zero. So x squared cannot be four. I, x squared minus four cannot be zero. x squared cannot be four. So x cannot be plus or minus two. So the domain is negative infinity to zero, uh, to negative two, union negative two to positive two, union two to infinity. So we just remove negative two and the positive two from the number line. When we remove two points, you actually have three intervals, left, middle, and the right intervals. We use this union to glue those intervals. And be careful, we use a round bracket because a round bracket means we do not include negative two and the, and the two. Okay. H of t. H of t is square root of a four minus three t. Uh, check this. In the definition of the domain, we only consider positive. I'm oh, sorry. We only consider real numbers. We only consider real numbers. We do not consider imaginary number. In, in so we cannot take square root of a negative number. So in order to make sense, square root of four minus a three x, uh, four minus three t. So four minus three t has to be positive, non-negative. Four minus three t is greater than or equal to zero. Okay, four minus three t is greater than or equal to zero. 
So it's a 4 is greater than or equal to 3t. In other words, 3t is less than or equal to 4. We divide this inequality by 3, a positive number. t is less than or equal to 4 over 3. So the domain less than, less than. So negative infinity to 4 over 3. Because you have equal sign, this is bracket. This is bracket. Okay? So that's uh, the natural domain. And uh, the third, uh, the next, next example. So we have D. Fx is square root of 3x plus 11 over x minus 5. So we have to consider the numerator and the denominator both. The denominator cannot be 0 x minus 5 is not equal to 0. x is not equal to 5. This is the first case, first condition. Second condition, 3x plus 12, because it's under square root, it has to be greater than or equal to 0. So 3x is greater than or equal to negative 12. We divide it by 3. We get x is greater than or equal to negative 4. You divide inequality by a, a positive 3, so you keep the direction. You keep the direction, so x is greater than or equal to 4. Negative 12 over 3 is negative 4. So it's greater than or equal to negative 4, but not equal to 5. Negative 4 is here, and 5 here, you have to remove it. So the domain is negative 4 to 5, and 5 to infinity. So we use this trick to remove 5. OK? And in this part, uh, one x is in the domain. We say that fx is defined, is well defined, or is defined at x. No, not, not with fx. f is defined at x, or fx exists. When x is in the domain, the function is defined at the given point, or fx exists. If x is not in the domain, we say that f is not defined at x, or fx does not exist. fx does not exist. So for example, We say uh, if fx, uh, assume fx is uh, uh, x over x squared minus 1, then f0 exists. But f1 and f negative 1 do not exist. Because when x is equal to 1, the denominator is 0. When x is negative 1, the denominator is also 0. So those two things do not exist. Okay, so for example, sometimes we have this uh, problem from the, or we have this function from the uh, uh, other problems. We will have some natural requirement. Express the area of a circle as a function of its radius find the domain uh, area area when you're given when you are given a radius area is a pi r squared so this is a function the area uh, depend on the radius 
by this uh, by this function pi r square, and because we're talking about geometry, you have a radius. We never have negative radius. We never have zero radius. If you have a zero radius, you do not have a circle. You have a point. So the domain, the natural domain, the domain is a set of all real numbers such that r is greater than zero. So you, you can only allow positive radius, right? Okay, so this is the first part of the uh, section 3.1. We will continue the section 3.1 in the next uh, video. Uh, do your exercise. Make sure you memorize all the concepts and the definitions or names. You can relate names to the, the proper uh, formulas. This is the first section. There's most of the part which is try to define certain terminologies. Okay? Okay, we will stop this video and continue in another videos. Okay, do your exercise.